an amazing day today. And to Jesus be the glory. I have amazing news for you. But I'm going to wait till you all come on. Prophetic news. This is a prophetic alert that is remarkable. What the Lord is doing is amazing. And I'm so glad you're all coming on. Just want to make sure I can see your names. And uh, let me see here. Right there we go. So thank you for coming on. And I want to say hello to all you sweet people. Hello to Pamela. And hello to Tuba and Nathan and Jake. To, I've got the map of the Middle East behind me because it's incredible what's going on right now prophetically. Hello to Loon and Ralza and Teresa and Peter and Erwin. I'm so glad you're all coming on. Share this with your friends because what I'm going to talk to you about is incredibly important. Maybe more than most people realize what just happened yesterday, yesterday. And so here we are today, this is Saturday, and yesterday, Friday, and some of you will probably see this later, I'm sure, but uh, the announcement that was made by Benjamin Netanyahu when he spoke at the United Nations, and I've watched some some other things prior to that about the uh, negotiations going on, that have been going on, between Saudi Arabia and Israel. It is incredibly, incredibly exciting because I believe this is the sign we've been waiting for to see the greatest revival in world history. Now, this is, I'm telling you, this is serious. So I'm going to wait till you, uh, you know, more of you join us. And while you're, you're, you're coming on, hello to um, Charles and Bua. And Van Vanju, some of your names are amazing. I told you that. Hello, hello to Daniel. Anyways, uh, Lord, we thank you. We bless your holy name. Can we just lift your, lift our hands and bless them? Lord, we bless you for what you are doing in our lifetime. Before our very eyes, we are seeing your hand moving mightily. To you be the glory. And God's people said a mighty and glorious amen. All right, here's what's going on. Saudi Arabia and Israel are on the verge of having normal relations. Now, why is that so important? Okay, watch this. Now, Israel has already made peace with Egypt and Jordan. And they also have peace with Sudan and Morocco in North Africa. The minute, the minute Saudi Arabia joins, and they will, the, this entire picture will change. It will be like a circle of peace around Israel. Now, Syria, Iraq, Lebanon, all that, that's probably for later. But I'm going to tell you something. In 1948, when Israel became a nation, we saw a mighty move of God. We called it the voice of healing. It was called the voice of healing. It shook the world. In 1967, when Israel took Jerusalem, and the city of Jerusalem was restored to the Jewish people after 2,000 years. That literally triggered the charismatic renewal. Then in 1973, when the Yom Kippur happened, when Egypt and Syria and Israel had war in October of 73, there we saw the beginning of the establishment of Christian television on the globe. So Israel is a sign to the world. God said something very powerful in in his word. He said that what happens in Israel will affect the world. Winston Churchill said years ago, he said, God will deal with the nations as they deal with the Jewish people. That's a fact. So when, when, when you see events in Israel, It brings about events in the church and then the world. For example, 1948. I want to talk about this this, uh, sign. This event is like massive, very uh, big news. Uh, Probably, I would say it's even bigger than 48 or 67 or 73. And, And here's why. Because 
In 48, it was the war of liberation when Israel was established as a nation. In 67, it was a war forced on them, uh, frankly. And 67 brought about uh, the changes that we see today in the Middle East. Uh, Israel, of course, uh, occupied the Golan Heights at the time, West Bank and Sinai. They gave Sinai back to Egypt, but they, they still have what is called the West Bank and uh, what the Jewish people call Judea and Samaria, because that's a part of the Bible, uh, what the land that God gave to Abraham. Anyways, and the Golan Heights, of course, is right here by, uh, by Syria. It's not too far from Lebanon. But anyways, what I'm here to tell you, and by the way, that brought about the charismatic renewal. Same year. We're talking all of it happening at the same time. 48, Voice of Healing, was just released on the globe. 67, the great charismatic renewal. That happened in Notre Dame when two Catholic priests were looking for water in a conference. And the well had been empty for a long time. And the well miraculously filled up. And that's what started the charismatic renewal. I don't know if you even know that. It happened with two Catholic priests in Notre Dame. And they were looking for water for the conference that they were having. These were Catholic uh, charismatics at the time, even though before the charismatic movement had taken the world. There were, there were priests who were filled with the Holy Spirit looking for water, and they prayed and got filled, literally. <laughs> he gave them water in the well that had been dry for years. And then 73 is when TBN was established, the first major network on earth with Paul and Jane Crouch, my dearest friends on earth, I think, at that time. They're in heaven now, of course. But think about what God has done with all these events that really were, were triggered by, by events in Israel fulfilling what God said in Deuteronomy. All right? Now, let's go and look at this thing here. We've all been waiting. Okay, Lord, what's next on the agenda? So we saw the voice of healing, charismatic movement, the establishment of Christian TV, and we were all wondering, like, what is the next major event in the world? We all knew revival. It's going to be a revival because they were all revivals in some way. This is going to be a global revival because now Israel is making peace with its neighbors. And here's why Saudi Arabia is important, because Saudi Arabia coming into that, that group that have no more relations with Israel. Think about it. Egypt has no more relations. Jordan has no more relations. And the UAE right here. And Bahrain. And Sudan. And Morocco. And so on. And you think about there's already nations that have come into what is called the Abraham Accord. But when the Saudis come in, this will be major because it will end. It will bring to an end the Israeli-Arab conflict that's been going on over 100 years. Think about that. That conflict would come to an end because Saudi Arabia is a very powerful Arab nation. Now, Bibi Netanyahu at the UN yesterday made the announcement that Israel and Saudi Arabia are on the verge of having normal relations. And then he talked about something amazing, which happened at the G20 conference recently in India, where India now is connecting. Can I just have a a map where I can see India in it, please, if, if, uh, if possible. Give me the larger one that you had on earlier. Quick, 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 please. Okay, Nathan? All right. All right, if you can, quickly, please. So just give me the, the map you had you had earlier on where we, where we could see India. If not, I'm, I'm going to keep talking, okay? So there's a corridor now being, being uh, built or will be built soon. All right, thank you very much. There it is. It's a little foggy, but it's all right. Think about a corridor from India through Saudi Arabia, through Israel, right to Europe that will connect these nations for the first time in communication. Put that, uh, that, that, that other map on, uh, you know, right now because this, oh, that's better because that, that was a little foggy. Anyways, think about those, those nations being connected economically in communication. Uh, fiber optic and rail will go right through this entire part of the world, connecting 2 billion 
people economically. This is the first time ever in the history of the world we see this, but it fulfills prophecy. This is the amazing thing. But let me first talk about the move of God that's coming. Saints, this is so incredibly exciting because this is what I believe, okay? I believe we are about to see. Thank you, Jesus. Can we lift our hands up? Thank the Lord for it. We give you praise, Lord, for this. I believe what we're going to see is a revival that will be a combination of the past revivals in one. We're going to see amazing miracles. Now, before that, remember, we saw the voice of healing. Now, in the voice of, of healing movement, there was tremendous evangelism. Billy Graham on the scene, Otto Roberts on the scene, Rex Humbard and, and uh, T.L. Osborne and so many that brought souls into the kingdom through the power of the Holy Spirit and the gospel's message. But what we saw amazingly at the same time is evangelism and, and healing coming together. With Billy Graham, evangelism. Millions came into the kingdom. Oro Roberts, people came into the kingdom and healed by the power of God. And they were friends, amazingly. Billy and Oral were good, close friends. And so was Rex Humbard at the time. The three major names in those days were these men. Billy Graham, Oro Roberts, Rex Humbard. Rex Humbard was the first man to ever preach the gospel in America on television from Akron, Ohio. And Oral was my very dear friend. So was Rex. I never met Billy Graham. Of course, I met his son, amazing son that he has, Franklin. I honored greatly and love him very much. And I want the whole world to know that because he affected my life years ago in an amazing way when we spent a whole day together in, in Charlotte. And he gave me some amazing, powerful advice that I took and I followed. And that's why I think the Lord began to do what he did in our crusades with people getting saved because he told me, he said, focus on souls and God will focus on you, Benny. And boy, that really, really blessed my life and still is blessing my life. So, but in those days, we, we, we saw these two amazing moves happening together, but they called it the voice of healing. And then the great charismatic renewal where Catherine Kuhlman came on the scene and the part of God just filled the whole world almost at the same time with Miss Kuhlman and others like her. And then in 73, when Paul and Jan Crouch established Christian television, TBN, and then other networks began to come on. And what did we see? The world was shaken. <laughs> the world was plowed. Now listen carefully. The plowing began with Christian TV because Christian TV plowed the land for the gospel. Nations that never heard of the gospel, never heard of the Lord, began hearing of the Lord all over the world. So now we are going to see a harvest because the seed had been sown, all right? When Christian TV came on the scene, Christian TV, God used it to plow the land throughout the world where the seed for the gospel was sown. People were coming to the Lord by the millions. Today, though, we are going to see the results. The harvest is on the way. Oh, dear God, I give you praise for this. This harvest is going, to, is, is, is going to literally be a combination of the voice of healing and the charismatic renewal and the spreading of the gospel in ways today through social media. I think we're about to see an explosion of the gospel through social media because social media is the future. It, it already is. I'm talking to you right now on social media throughout the world, and I'm seeing your names talking to me and saying things to me. I love it. We didn't have that with TV, and now we can talk to you back and forth. Now, here's the amazing thing. The amazing thing is when that revival begins, I'm telling you, I'm feeling this so strong, I can explode. You are going to see the salvation of loved ones you've prayed for for a long time that just did not come into the kingdom at that time. Today, they're going to be swept in the kingdom of God like this. I remember, I remember when Catherine Kuhlman prophesied twice, I was in her meeting, when she said the day will come, everyone will be healed in the body of Christ. And I went and saw Otto Roberts years after that when he became my friend. I heard Miss Kuhlman. I was sitting right behind her on the platform when she said the day will come, all will be healed. And it happened twice. And John Arnott from Canada, whom God used in the great 
Toronto Blessing, who's my dear friend, he and I began together years ago, was sitting right next to me. And we heard her say those words. I saw the Roberts one day, you know, years later. I said, I, I want you to lay hands on me. I got on my knees. I said, because I had asked him, I said, have you ever seen everyone healed in one service? He said, yep, without hesitation. He said, December 1952, Jacksonville, Florida, under the tent. In three minutes, God healed them all. And I got on my knees. I said, Oral, lay hands on me. I want to see it before God takes me home. I believe I will now because of this. He said, why? Because, see, in the Bible, in Deuteronomy, God said that he will establish the borders of the nations according to the, to the number of the children of Israel. Now, he didn't mean like naturally. He meant spiritually. What happens in Israel will affect the world, but first the church. All right? This is why I believe, and I'm, I, I'm so excited. I'm about to blow up, to be honest with you, and like explode with joy that God is going to fulfill his word for Catherine Kuhlman. And before her, Smith Wigglesworth, who told Dr. Semrall about the coming move. And I heard that from Dr. Semrall himself. Lester Semrall told me what, what, what he heard from Smith Wigglesworth, that the, that the day would come, there'll be miracles unseen, unseen since the days of the book of Acts, the days of the apostles, that God will perform through his people through his people, not through evangelists. No, no, no. People like you. You are going to see miracles in your kitchen. You're going to see miracles in your living room. You, you're going to lay hands on the sick and see him healed left and right, even on the sidewalks. I've heard that over, back in the 70s. We heard that many times by those that God was using then, that the day will come, we will see salvation. They'll come to all our loved ones. We're going to see healings that come throughout the world as the church, as the church lays hands on the sick. We're going to see the, the fulfillment. I feel the anointing talking there, God. We're going to see the fulfillment of Mark 16, precious people of God, where Jesus said, they shall lay hands. He didn't say some, no, they, they who are the believers, they shall lay hands on the sick and the sick shall recover. Hallelujah. Yes, I, you know, Abibi said, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. You people are really, really, uh, oh my, my, you're really excited, like, like me. Now, this move not only is going to bring salvation and miracles, but prosperity on a, on a scale unseen in the world. Why? Because that prosperity is going to fulfill the promise of God to Abraham and the day of the apostles when they said that as you bless God, none will lack. And the Bible says, none lacked among them. None lacked among them. Listen, God never promised us little. He said to Israel, and remember, three things always happen together, always. Evangelism, healings, and prosperity. Every single time. Israel comes out of Egypt, okay? That is what salvation speaks of salvation. They were all healed, right? When they came out. In the Psalms, it says, not one feeble among their tribes. And they brought the wealth of the Egyptians out with them. What happened in the book of Acts? The same thing. They were saved first, now healed, and then they prospered in Acts 4. So when the Holy Spirit came on the day of Pentecost, 3,000 saved. Later, 5,000 saved in the temple. Then the healings began in such power, so much so, after that Peter and John walked into the temple and that crippled man was healed, it says the very shadow of Peter healed the sick all over Jerusalem. But then none lacked among them. They, they began to see the power of God in such ways that it blessed them even in the natural. When Amy Semple McPherson was ministering in Los Angeles years ago, those three things happened with her ministry and Miss Kuhlman. Amy Semple Mac, Mac, McPherson had more money to give to the poor than the government of California at the time because of the, uh, of the blessings of God on her ministry. She saw salvation. She saw miracles where she would have, listen, she had meetings for stretchers only on Saturday's afternoon. I heard that from her own son, whom I met. Amy Semple McPherson had meetings, stretchers only where people came on stretchers and one after the other came running. It's happening. It's going to happen again around 
the world. Lift your hands and praise the Lord for its sake. This is why I had to come to you today. I had to talk to you about this. Because this is key right here. This is key. That Saudi Arabia is going to make peace with Israel. They're on the verge. On the verge. Bibi announced it yesterday at the United Nations. I almost came off my seat when I heard him say that. And, you know, I've been following the news. In fact, there was a, a, a Fox report. No, you know, I don't watch TV. I just have to download stuff to see it. I, you know, I only look at the post from Jerusalem, the newspaper, the, the, you know. I think that's probably the only trusted newspaper that I trust in the whole world is the, is the post from Jerusalem because they give you great news right on time too. And, and, and Bible news too. It's not just about the world news. And when I saw it, I said, this is it. This is the day. I immediately downloaded. I wanted to see it for myself. I heard the entire speech. I was amazed by what, what he said. And let's pray for him that God will keep him strong and fix up all the problems inside Israel with the judicial reform, all that stuff, I think, will come to an end and get all fixed up. But still, this is key because for the first time, we are going to see these nations come together in peace. And eventually, it will solve the Palestinian-Israeli problem. It will have to because the Saudis are very influential in the Arab world. Everyone listens to them because of their oil reserves. They give a lot of money to the Arab world. Without Saudi Arabia, uh, Egypt would be in trouble economically, so will Jordan, so will the rest, okay? So, so the Saudis have been put in a place to bless the whole Arab world. Economically, I'm talking about. So they all listen to them. So the Saudis are gonna put pressure on these Arab nations to normalize with Israel and then the report just came out today that seven more nations are going to make peace with Israel after Saudi Arabia makes peace. This is like stunning news. It also fulfills, by the way, what it says in Ezekiel 38 because the invasion will come. Remember that Gog and Magog war is on the, is, is on the horizon down the road. But it, it, it says that Israel will be attacked at a time when they are living in peace. That day is coming. That day is coming because this will cause it to happen. And I'm here to tell you, peace will come between the Palestinians and the Israelis. How? Only God knows. But it's going to have to happen for you know, a short time, even if not, maybe a little longer. Because even the Palestinians deserve to, to be blessed, okay? The whole Arab world is going to be blessed. And the Palestinians need the Lord and his love too, like anyone, like anyone else. Thank God for, a lot of them are strong believers. I know many of them who love Jesus just like you and I do, okay? But the thing is this, when it, it happens, my focus is the revival, the revival that will take place even in the Arab world. There's no doubt in my mind. Last night, I, I was speaking at my son's, uh, uh, my son-in-law, who's really my son, uh, Dear Michael Kulianos and Jessica, my precious daughter, they have a big ministry called Jesus Image. I'm sure many of you know. And I was speaking there on Thursday, and then last night we were, we were there again, and I ministered the communion. And I met a couple from Egypt who, who flew in just for the conference. And I'm hearing so many reports about what's happening inside Egypt today, with the move of God, I mean. I'm here to prophesy, and many of you sweet people in the Middle East are, are are watching and hearing me now. There will come a mighty move of God to the Arab world. That is certain. God is going to literally move so mightily as he did in the book of Acts. We're talking about miracles, signs and wonders that were seen 2,000 years ago will come back to that same part of the world. When it all began, it's going to go back to the same place. And Lebanon, and Le I tell you, I know in the Holy Spirit there's coming a mighty move of God to Lebanon because the, the sweet Lebanese people need the love of Jesus in a big way right now and throughout the Arab world. This amazing revival that is coming is going to prepare the church for the coming of the Lord. Because it says in the book of Acts, Oh, thank you, Lord. It says there will be a time of refreshing before the coming of the Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. When Peter spoke about these days, 
He said, first there will come a time of refreshing. Watch this. I'm reading Acts 3, verse 20. And he shall send Jesus Christ, which before was preached unto you, whom the heaven must receive until the times of restitution. The heaven must receive. And then the restitution of all things, which God has spoken by the mouth of his holy, the God of the anointing here, his holy prophets, since the world began. But then he says, he shall send Jesus, which before was preached unto you, whom the heaven must receive. In other words, he will stay in heaven until the times of restitution or restoration of all things which God has spoken by the mouth of all his prophets. And this is what's coming. This is what we've been waiting for. Because the coming of the Lord will not happen until the time of restitution is fulfilled. That great revival, the greatest ever. When did, it, listen, when did Israel see revival? Before they came out of Egypt. They saw Egypt destroyed of that day anyways, when Pharaoh was on, in power. And then they were all delivered. They were all healed. What a mighty move of God that was. And they saw the cloud by day, the fire by night. They heard the voice of God you know, audibly speak, speak. Listen, think about the move of God then, when God spoke to them from the mount. That will happen again. The greatest move of the Holy Spirit before our departure. Before we leave, we are going to see a move of the Spirit because that's what it says in Acts. And then, what are we waiting for now? We are going to see this war happen. Gog, Magog war. And Israel will be victorious. And the world will stand in awe of the God of Israel. For the wonders that he will, that he will do, that the whole world will see. Now listen, this is not political. This is biblical. Biblical. It's all about the Bible. Nothing about politics here. But you. Where do you fit in? God is going to use you. That's where you fit in. Get ready, sweet people of God. Get ready, all of you. Thank you. Thank you for your comments right now. Thank you, dear Laura and Richard and Lisa. Wow. God's going to use you. Stretch your hands. Come on, Lord, I thank you for your wonderful, wonderful promises. I thank you for what you're doing, Lord, before our very, very eyes right now. That we are alive right now. In our lifetime, you are performing miracles in the part of the world where you moved years ago. Abraham came out of Ur and Aran. Isaac and Jacob lived in those lands, Lord, in your land. The Holy Spirit fell on the day of Pentecost in Jerusalem where your precious son died on the cross and rose from the dead in that same city. Now, Lord, I pray today again, visit the whole Middle East. And Lord, visit everyone watching and listening to me and use them and sanctify them and purify them and glorify your name through them in the coming days. Now, Lord, I praise you for the coming move. I praise you for the coming revival worldwide, the coming restitution, restoration of all things as your word declares in Acts 3. To you, blessed Jesus, be all the glory. And we all cry, come, Lord Jesus. Come soon. We need you. We give you all the praise. Now listen, the anointing of God that's here right now, lift your hands and ask God to anoint you right now. Just say, Father, I receive your, your anointing for this hour. Say it, come on. I receive your anointing for this hour. I receive your new anointing for this moment. I receive it now. In the name of Jesus. Amen. All right. Faithful to the Lord. We have to be faithful to the Lord. A faithful man will abound with blessings. You have to be faithful today to see the great abundance of tomorrow. You have to see the abundance of tomorrow if, and you will see it, if you succeed now in the work of the Lord. So do it right now. Sow your seed right now into the Lord's work. Do it right now. So God can bless you financially when this move begins. 
Lord, to you be all the praise, all the glory, all the honor and majesty. And God's people said, Amen and Amen. All right, precious saints, I'm going to have to say my goodbye to you. But listen, listen. Be, be Praise the Lord every day from, from now on for the coming move of the Holy Spirit on the church that will be glorious, beyond glorious. All right, much love to you. I'll see you on Monday for a lot more. And I may do more live things like this with you. I may even come back tomorrow because who knows what's going to happen between now and then. Okay, much love. And a great season is on the way. Lift your hands and praise him. The great season has begun in the name of Jesus. Much love to all of you with all my heart.